so we've opened up um, the covering here we've just taped it and this is where our server is going to go it looks like we're going to have to cut this open uh, to get to get the servo hinge you can see that there and then the horn uh, kind of goes through there so that's what we're going to be working on uh, this installation on both the thing we're going to do is um, this is where the hinge for the stabulator is going to come through so we got to clear the hole through the covering um, for that sweet so now you can see that we have our hole where the shaft is going to go through the things you get is a bunch of uh, rods so here's the longest one this is the wing and then you get these four so you get two carbon fiber and two aluminum and per the manual the aluminum guys are the ones that are going to go in through the here first thing that i'm a little bit well a lot of bit disappointed which is that all that we have in here is a, like this collar with the bushing there's no ball bearing in there and so this aluminum rod is supposed to slide in through from out here and it's supposed to put a collar in between there to keep it in place but it's already sticking um, this is terrible design in my opinion because <sighs> there's friction that's gonna happen in here um, and that's not gonna be good for the elevator so I'm thinking I'm gonna have to figure out something uh, fix that so maybe I will redesign I don't know can't actually do that uh, it would be nice if you know there's a ball bearing here and maybe in there or at least ball bearing on here because this the stabilator is gonna oscillate or move about this point and if it's glued through this hole then the only uh, movement that's gonna happen is gonna be in this collar and that's just friction so uh, not great per the manual it says that uh, the aluminum rod uh, should be glued to the stabulator um, so I thought about making these removable by like putting a screw in through the top here but looking in there I don't think that material is strong enough for that kind of force so I think I'm just gonna glue it and you can see I've already started sanding this because I'm gonna epoxy this guy into here so I've already voiced my concern about how much I dislike this but um, I can't get the rods to go through so what I'm doing is I mounted them on a drill and I'm gonna try to uh, basically evenly grind down the metal just so that it fits better into the receiving uh, bushing there and I'm using this is 180 grit sandpaper and once that's done I'm gonna work my way up uh, from 180 so the next one is 320 because I want this to be smooth um, and then maybe stop at 800 or so but this is what I'm gonna have to do to hopefully get this rod to fit perfectly in there um, but they really should find a better solution this is not the way to do it okay so now you can see I've worked it enough so that it actually slides in and out I still really dislike this mechanism and I'm gonna figure out if I can get ball bearings we really just need ball bearings okay so it goes without saying that because I'm gonna epoxy this into the stabulator we need to uh, create grooves in there remember we're looking for places for the epoxy to bite into I think I'm gonna have to actually do something external for that that really has me worried so maybe screws to go from the stabulator directly into into this guy 
let's talk about the stabulator here. What I'm going to be using is EP420A uh, epoxy and that air epoxy is what's going to go in here. I have cleaned the surface here with uh, EP, IPA, so alcohol, and I'm happy with how clean it is. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to put some epoxy in there. I'm also going to put epoxy uh, through here uh, as well. Um, and then we're going to glue this in there. I might just drill a couple of holes through here so that the epoxy can seep out from in here into the surface and hopefully just help create a better seal. Uh, so that's my plan. I'll show you once that's done. See what I'm going for here is I'm going to squirt some epoxy in here and the goal is to really get that to come out and obviously on the surface as well. We're going to rotate this all around in the stabulator and that should make for a good connection. My vertical, not vertical, sorry, horizontal stabs and I have glued the aluminum rods in with uh, Infinity Bond 420 um, and once that's dry we're gonna go ahead and drill from the top into the aluminum and put uh, maybe a screw, a couple of screws in there just to make sure that that doesn't you know rotate um, in any way. What I'm worried about is that you know something weird could happen in here um, that causes like the shaft to stick or something and the elevator the stabulator will come loose from that you know or just anti-rotation issues where instead of rotating the flight surface you're just rotating um, uh, you know sort of just around but I guess that wouldn't happen because the server is gonna hold on to this but anyways so that's pretty solid we're gonna put our color in here uh, and move on In the package, in the hardware package, uh, you we have this uh, sort of thing that's labeled specifically accessories for horizontal stab. And in there we have uh, rods as well as these collars and some sort of washers. And so we're going to take a washer and a collet. And according to the manual, what happens is we take this guy out we insert the washer sort of like that and then as we mount this in this collar is actually gonna sit in place in there to lock that uh, rod in position so we're just gonna see place this collar and then work the rod through it just like that and once we adjust so you can see that the co the washer gives you a bit of a gap and that's to allow this the stabulator to move up and down and then I'm just going to tighten the the lock um, screws on the collar but first I'm gonna apply a little bit of Loctite onto those and tighten them down because that is not something I want coming off anytime soon so we can see that I've applied thread locker in here and I'm just going to secure this guy in place. Um, what I want to make sure is that no thread locker actually gets in the shaft, in between the shaft and that, um, that, that receiving piece there. So unfortunately I was able to still get some uh, uh, Loctite into the shaft so I had to pull this out and it was a bit rigid. So. I'm going to say that if you choose to do Loctite, it's probably best to Loctite the screws outside like that. Let, let that Loctite dry so that it doesn't get into the surface that is going to be holding onto the shaft. Because if it does, then this guy will be permanently glued to this, which is not what you want. So I've also found my two spots. So there's that and, and that. I'm gonna just make those, I'm gonna flat spot those out. Okay, so before I finally put this thing completely together, you can tell I'm really worried about binding here. Um, I'm going to apply some BVM dry lube onto the shaft. Uh, just, you know, an extra lubricant. I really want 
uh, the movement around the shaft to be very smooth um, and this stuff should sort of dry and help with uh, oh yeah that, that's a big difference right there just help with rotating the shaft and spinning and turning around because we have no ball bearings and I'm happy with that that feels very solid no play but uh, still moving in the collar so uh, definitely one of those setups that needs a little more uh, care when you're assembling but uh, so far it looks like it might just work uh, again still super nervous that there's no ball bearing but uh, it is what it is so a few things to note out here is number one to get access to the holes that you will use to mount the servo uh, you need to cut through the the film here and you can see you get your two access holes the second thing is that per the manual um, this servo needs to be installed before you actually lock in the uh, stabulator in place and that's because obviously once you lock that in stabulator is going to cover these holes so you will not have access to that so uh, what I'm just going to do is I have lined up my servo correctly and the spline of the servo is uh, towards the back of the aircraft. This is what I mean when I say that. You can see that the spline is towards the back side and not the front side. So we're going to secure that in place and show you once it's done. Alright, so as we can see I have assembled the elevator and uh, this is the geometry I ended up with. I'm going to just... Uh, get down to that level so we can see what I ended up with so I put this arm um, that's fairly long and I'm about a uh, second hole from the top and the reason for that is because um, the manual calls for 80 millimeters of travel for up elevator and 75 for down and that means that in order to not hit this spot right here you need to have a fairly long arm so the way this arm has been set up, I believe I get the 80 millimeters. So, but 80 millimeters on the scale here, and uh, I definitely hit that. And as you can see, 80 millimeters gets you completely maxed out, um, at least with this setup. So, here is the servo arm that I used 25 tooth, and the length of it is well overall length is about 37 millimeters and the hole that I'm using is about 25 millimeters out from the center so that's what's in here and as you can see I'm using really beefy brushless coreless servos these are 60 kilogram just because I don't want any issues with the flying tail the step here is basically just attaching this you know, and screwing that in place and I have the four screws that you can see there and that's gonna be a wrap I can talk something about how the elevator uh, control arm mounts so you can see uh, on the left side this is how I have it mounted and I would think this would not be the correct way to do it um, and the reason is even though it doesn't feel like it, you can see that there's already a ding right there from um, this uh, nut and screw actually hitting the fuselage. So what you want to do instead is what I've done on this side, and I believe this is how the manual calls for it to be installed, is to have your pan head go in from the inside and go outward. So that way you can see there is almost no chance for that to hit the fuselage even with full travel. So just something to keep in mind when you're installing um, the uh, full stab. Feels steady for now, doesn't look like it's got any play, but I guess this is gonna be one of those things that I uh, check regularly and service and make sure that uh, things are looking good back there.